Hi, in this video I'm going to show you some of the things I do to look after my scan and cut machine, mats and blades. Um, so we're going to cover things like um, checking underneath the rollers for any debris, removing the scanner window on the bottom of the machine to make sure it's clean and check for any bits of card or vinyl that may be stuck in there, checking and replacing the blade, how to calibrate the machine and um, a little bit about how to clean and re-sticky the mats. So the first thing to say is that I always keep my scan and cut machine covered up. Now the cover that you can see here is um, a cover I made years ago for a previous electronic cutter and in actual fact it's it's too big really. Um, but, you know, it serves a purpose. It keeps the dust off the machine and therefore keeps it clean. So um, I'm going to remove this and then we're going to start with looking at how to keep the machine clean. OK, the first thing to say is I'm going to put my screen down just so that it doesn't get knocked um, because I'm going to turn the machine over in a few minutes. I'm going to take the blade housing out for now and just put that on one side and just um, put that back down and then what I would say is um, try and get yourself a little torch and don't be afraid to you know tip your machine back slightly and have a good look inside to see if there are any bits of debris or bits of old card or anything stuck in there I've got um, a little brush, um, it's one of these kind of brushes that comes with a sewing machine and then basically all as I would do is just kind of brush along the bottom here and see if anything um, comes out, you know you might get bits of lint or bits of card or you know if you're cutting fabric all sorts of things could get you know locked in there, just give it a brush and then <clears throat> I would just take either a lint free cloth or I've just got a piece of kitchen paper and just wipe any debris away. Um, same for the outside of your machine, um, again a lint free cloth or a piece of kitchen paper, you know just wipe over your screen gently and round the outside of your machine. Obviously if your machine gets really grubby you could use a baby wipe on it and then just make sure you dry it with um, a cloth something afterwards. So that's kind of just basic, simple maintenance. I'm going to close this up and I'm going to turn the machine over and um, have a look at the scanner window. What I would say is um, I've disconnected the mains lead from the machine completely so there's nothing attached to this at all at the moment. I'm just going to turn it over and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've, I've turned the machine over and you can see that there's a little white bar here and on the end nearest where your blade housing normally is so if I just tip this back just to show you there's, there's the blade housing and when you tip this over it's on the same end as that there's a little catch here and if you just push that catch towards the right this comes out and then again you can wipe this as you can see mine's a little bit dusty and just wipe it with a cloth to get any bits of dust or you may have bits of vinyl sometimes if you're cutting vinyl you get bits of vinyl that might stick to this and then if I just try and tip the machine up a little bit more it's not easy to try and film this and do this all at the same time but basically in there is your scanner window so again you want to just get your nice lint free cloth and just give that a wipe and then you just hook this back in and click it back into place here and that's your scanner window cleaned. The next thing to look at is the blade. 
so I'm going to unscrew this is where we normally set the blade depth I'm going to unscrew the blade housing so it comes apart and then just give this a tap on your desk and you'll see if any bits of debris fall out and again I'm just going to use this brush and just give this a tap um, and a bit of a wipe because you do get bits of card and things stuck in here as well fibers off your mat when you're cutting and that can affect how your blade cuts another thing you can do have a look at the end of your blade with a, a torch and just see you know if it's um, broken or anything and then to change your blade um, your spatula on the back of your spatula you've got this kind of rubber here and this is for changing your blade try and do this while you can see what I'm doing so I'm doing this left-handed so I'm, bear with me basically you put your blade in there and then lift the housing off and then again you know you can get in there and just make sure there's no bits of debris in there and then you can get a new blade if you've got one in um try and find mine get a new blade in your in your packet take your blade out i would put the old blade in there and even if you think it's past it's best for cutting on a day-to-day -day basis i would keep it and if you ever decide that you want to cut glitter card um i i write old on my canisters and i put all my old blades in and keep them and i use them for things like glitter card or if i'm um want to test something out and I, and I and I'm not too sure whether it will damage the blade I just I would use an old blade and then basically um, you pick it you pick your new blade up by the shaft and just drop it drop it back in and give it a wiggle and it just drops back in then you get this and you screw it back on and you screw it you have to apply a little bit of pressure to start start it screwing so it grabs the thread and then with the name in front of you, you screw it as far as it will go. And it goes all the way past 12 and virtually back round to number one again. And if you look, you'll see that the blade is sticking out there. And then what you do, you turn it back to set your blade to the depth that you need for your media. Okay, the next thing we're going to try is to recalibrate the screen. So if the screen doesn't react to how you would expect it to or something isn't quite right, you can try recalibrating. And this is in the manual as well. Um, the Scan and Cut manual is available on a CD disc that you get with your machine. But if you've lost it or broken it or something like that, if you go to my blog, there's a link in the left hand sidebar that will take you to... Um, the Brother website where you can download and save the manual again and I'll put the details of my blog um, in the comments box below. So to recalibrate the screen according to the information that I've read you have to be in your, in your Brother and Scan and Cut. You have to press and hold the screen, turn the machine off and then turn it back on while you're still holding the screen. And then you'll see that you've got numbers one, two, three, four, and five. And it tells you to use the tool that came with the scan and cut and to touch in the center of each cross in turn. Now, I've never done this, so we'll see what happens. okay and it says success so I assume that's all there is to it and then I think what you must have to do is turn your machine off and back on and then hopefully your machine will respond better to you than it than it did before as I say I've never had to do it so that's all a little bit new to me 
Right, the last thing I want to talk about are the mats. Okay, so this is my Scan and Cut regular mat. This is the first mat I got with my machine and I've had my machine since the beginning of March. So this mat is about seven months old now. First thing I would say is whenever you finish using it, make sure you put the plastic back on it and that will help keep dust and lint and things off the mat. The other thing to say is we've all done it. This machine has a very good blade and pressure and we've all cut through our mat and I am no exception. So let me show you the back of my mat. You can see it's all patched up. Okay, so if you cut through your mat, don't worry about it. It's not um, rendered useless. If you've cut a patch completely out of it, mine's kind of scored in various places and not completely cut through. But if you've cut through it, turn it over like this to the back, put the patch back on and tape it up with some wide parcel tape. That's all mine is, brown parcel tape. You could use clear sellotape, anything. Just tape it back up and it's perfectly functional. And as I say, this is my original mat. And as you can see, you know, it's patched in a couple of places. So that's the mat. Now, I'm going to take the cover off. I'm not going to go into great detail into cleaning the mat because I have done a blog post on it. And again, I'll put um, a link to the post to my blog and you can go and have a look at it. But basically, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, what you can do is get yourself an alcohol-free baby wipe and wipe over. You do, your mat's kind of divided into four, six-inch squares. So I would do a square at a time. So get yourself a, as I say, a non-alcohol baby wipe, wipe over horizontally and then vertically and do that on each section. Let it air dry, then put the protective cover back on it. And that should bring some of the sticky back to it. It should remove some of the lint and fluff from your mat. Okay, so that's what you can do. You can also um, re-stick your mat by applying something like this. Um, so it's just gone very sunny here all of a sudden, so I'm getting a bit of glare. But this is a zig. Um, it's made by Sukaniko, I think it is. Two-way repositionable glue pen with a big jumbo tip end, which I'll try and get off and show you. There, I don't know if you can see that. Big jumbo tip, that's the one you need. And then again, what I would do, I would, um, I'm not gonna do this one at the moment because um, it's got quite a lot of stick on it, but basically all you, you need to do, work in sections at a time, spread the glue on vertically all along one section, Keep within this dark blue line that runs round your mat before where you've got the measurements. Don't go beyond that. And then go across horizontally and it goes on blue. And when it's blue, it's permanent. So it will go on blue, but within five or ten minutes, it will dry clear. Once it's clear, it's repositionable. So all as you need to do then is put the clear plastic sheet back on your mat to protect it and it's good to go for the next time. Now what I do, this as I say is my original mat and this has been um, restuck with this zig pen twice since I've had it. So I, I got the machine early March, I think probably within about two or three weeks it had kind of completely lost its stick, wouldn't, wouldn't come back with baby wipes. So I bought this pen and I re-sticked it and it lasted months and it's just been re-sticked again in probably maybe the beginning of August. So once you do it with this, I will, I will warn you, it makes your mat very sticky. Um, but it's good because it holds onto your card and you get a good cut with it because your card is definitely stuck down. Um, I wouldn't use this um, glue on the low tap mat or anything like that for paper because you just won't get it off the off the mat, only on your regular mat. Um, but what you can also do um, is use something like this. Now this is called Crafter's Companion Stick Away and it's an adhesive cleaning agent and basically it removes sticky off things. So if you've had... Um, 
something that's had a sticky label stuck on it and you've peeled the label off and you've still got that residue that you know you can never get off and you rub it and it just goes black and grubby you spray a bit of this on it and leave it for a few seconds and that stickiness will be removed now i have used this on my mats what i did the first time i used the zig pen i just went straight over the mat and that was it but the second time i re-stickied my mat with the zig i use this on my mat first so what i'll do i'll just do this top corner because i don't want to do all the mat because it's fairly sticky um but i'll do this top corner and show you how you would do it and again you would do this in sections if you want to try this you just apply a little bit of the spray it's like a clear spray you can't really see it on the mat and you just leave it for a few seconds and then i would use something like this this is um a scraper that I used to have for a puzzles machine but you could use a credit card and basically what you need to do is just spread that liquid around within that that section and what it does it starts eating into the sticky that's on there and then if you just leave it and let it work I'm working away from this dotted line here as you can see and the same here and the same here because I don't want to go anywhere near where the uh, ruler or anything is on the mat and I'm just spreading it around and it will start to soak in and then what you can do hands are sticking to the mat you can start scraping and again I would work in one direction and then the other now there might not be a lot of residue to come off this mat because as I say it has been done once but basically just scrape and the more you leave it to soak in the more it works and you'll be surprised how nice and clean and you know you can feel the wetness on your mat just spread it around a bit more if you're not getting some areas and let it work in and then you'll start to get all this muck that comes up off your machine and you kind of get like a gloopy mess i don't know if you can see this on the end here but you get this kind of gloopy mess and then i would have a little bit of kitchen roll handy clear your, your scraper or whatever it is onto a bit of kitchen roll and then as I say you can apply a little bit more I'm actually trying to do this at a distance because I'm trying to film and keep the mat in view for you but it does eat in to the adhesive and you kind of get like a jelly like gloop which is really all the adhesive that's it's picking up for you just do that in sections and you, you'll see your mat start to look you can see it lifting here now bring it together this is all can you see it there this is all the old adhesive coming off the mat and then just keep wiping your scraper on a piece of kitchen paper and keep doing that and then once that's You've, once you're happy with you've got all the adhesive off it use a wet wipe and wipe over it and let it air dry and then once it's completely air dry and you've done all the four sections of your mat apply your zig two-way glue again sorry about that strange noise that is our chicken cuckoo clock that somebody thought was quite funny to buy my little girl when she was younger so we have to put up with that poultry noise every hour. But hey ho. Anyway, so that's the mats. So I hope that's okay. It's just what I do to look after my electronic cutter and its accessories. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.